Hello to you on this beautiful dark day. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Depending on your mood, I'm very happy or very sad. But that thing blew up. Yeah, I just noticed. I warded the ones down there, but I have to ward these ones too. But in between the episodes, I have made a beautiful mess. A spaghetti of pipes. Which I don't really understand how it works. But I do know this is sulfuric acid, ammonia, nitric acid, and nitrobenzene. Uh, we don't have a humongous amount of nitrobenzene, it's just 1,500 buckets or so. That's because I wanted to keep some of the ammonia and some of the nitric acid for our other projects. But in other news, we have a few more distillation towers. Yes, we just needed maybe one and a half of them, but I don't know why I made three. Basically, what these distillation towers are doing is that they're processing the wood tar that we're getting from pyrolyzed ovens, and they're giving us the usual benzene, as well as phenol. And we have a stupendous amount of benzene. And yes, it's called benzene, not benzene. The only people who are supposed to correct me are the French people, because I'm supposed to say benzene. My chemistry lessons were in French, so nitric acid for me is just weird. Nitric acid for me sounds more correct. Especially if you put the acid in the front, but uh, yeah. But that was not the only thing that I did. I did more stuff. In the extreme voltage age, you might notice that I have finished a ton of quests. Most of them had to do with the new circuit boards and also platinum. You know, I have been making a bajillion circuit boards and parts that we are going to need. Unfortunately, we can't really make the new circuits. Because I'm out of the old circuits and we need the old circuits in order to make new machines so that we can make the new circuits. That was a very complicated sentence. I hope it made sense. I have also been cooking a ton of titanium. Oops, we dropped it. Where's my cooler? You. And now that we are all here together, maybe we should start making our new badge of circuits. Eight stacks of coils. I just hate it when you're out of everything. I need eight stacks. That's five. I'm preparing tantalum. Don't you worry. I'm going to get way more capacitors, but this should give us two stacks of processor assembly, and I think that should give us one stack of workstations. We will see. Yeah, we have enough. Perfect. In other news, I have been checking on our garbage room, and it seems that we have a decent supply of compressed cobblestone. Although now that we have access to multi-blocks, I'm going to dedicate this room in order to make compressed cobblestone. So we're going to remove every other machine. We have 46 quadruple compressed cobblestone. I think you need 24 in order to make a bedrockium barrel. But at least we can make the one. Every bedrockium ingot is going to need a diamond block, and we don't have any in the system, but I think our mob farm is giving us some diamond blocks. If I'm not wrong, three stacks? Oh, two stacks and 55. Okay, so we shall get our first bedrockium ingot after 30 seconds. <laughs> we shall convert the bedrockium ingots into plates. Thank you. And voila, the first bedrockium barrel. 65,000 buckets. That should be a quest, no? Thank you, thank you. The final thing that I have been doing is that I have been washing a ton of chalcopyrite. I don't really need the stone dust, it's too much. And if we mix it with nitric acid, we're going to get a tiny pile of platinum group sludge dust. Oh, it's eating through the nitric acid, okay. If you're wondering what the hell am I doing, I'm trying to get a teeny tiny bit of iridium, just in case. We can't cook it, I just want the dust. This is so fast. <laughs> nice. We should also be very careful not to waste it. This is a very expensive dust. And we got two stacks, so far. And if we centrifuge that dust, what are we going to get? Come on, I'm still waiting. Oh, it takes 60 seconds. Okay. Yes, palladium and iridium metal residue. I'm also recycling some of my copper back. I was very short on copper. We are also making one stack of workstations. That would be lovely. Well, we do have our new circuits. Let us start working. EV emitter, EV sensor, the quest. Thank you. For some reason, you need one more emitter. <laughs> Thank you. Precision laser. And hopefully if nothing goes wrong, yes, the circuit assembler. The new one. This is like the fifth one we have made. I have been claiming our rewards and I got slowness. Oh, but rockium. Nice. Compressed steel. Not the best. Oh my goodness, saplings. Oh, there are so more loot bags. We take them. Yeah, I think we're going to get 10 more. <laughs> Perfect. Titanium. Leather pants. Conveyor module is not that bad. Nichrome is great. Oh, now we are talking. Nice. Why would you think I need a pressure plate? Or apple pie? Robot arms? EV? Can I smelt the frying pan for platinum? Is this a thing? No. It would have been really nice. You know, from the enchanted one, I got saplings. From the unenchanted one, 
I got the information panel. So the main reason that we had to make a few workstations and get the new circuit assembler is that now we have access to cheaper circuits. Previously, we had to make the medium voltage, then high voltage, then extreme voltage, and then insane voltage. Now we just start with high voltage. And it's kind of cheaper. I have been cutting something, yes. I want to just try and make 32 of them. I'll be right back. Also, we don't have any extreme voltage power in the clean room, so I'm just using batteries, and so far it's doing nicely. But for the quest, I think we only needed one. Yes, yes. For some very weird reason, I decided to continue with this quest line, and well, now I'm making the Elite Nano Processor. This is the mainframe, but much cheaper. It's just that it required a new wafer. It's been cut. Yes, no memory chip. And it's a good thing I started with half a stack, because otherwise we would have gotten, I don't know, like one of these. And I'm still doing everything with a battery. I'm just curious. I just want to see where it leads. I think it's going to lead to an LUV circuit. Yes, nanoprocessor mainframe. Why the hell do we need that? I have no idea. But it's kind of cheap. We can make it. Ladies and gentlemen, our first nanoprocessor mainframe. LUV tier. And it seems with a full battery you can make two of them. Uh oh, the elite nanoprocessor did not count. It counted, good. At first I had no idea why the hell am I doing this. Well, that's something nice. Anyways, there are a few fun things that we can make with it, and I'm glad that we did that, because I had no idea. And whenever I don't have an idea, I don't know how to plan. Also, our stupid EB setup is now over here, so don't judge me. Also today, we want to try something. Large gas turbine. Thank you for the quest. I have to kind of figure out how it works. I made too many turbine casings. Well, the tooltip always tells you that it's going to need 20 or 8 or 1 or whatever, and it's always wrong. I did gather a bunch of materials, and if you guys remember a few episodes ago, I don't remember exactly when we got an EV dynamo hatch, 4 amps. Meaning that the maximum power it can accept is 8192 EU, which is 1 amp of insane voltage. But we don't really want it for insane voltage, we just want it for extreme voltage. Also, I have no idea how it's going to look like, apparently you go in the center. You look weird. So it's a 3 by 3 tall and 4 long. We need to have a maintenance hatch. How would it be in the side and centered? This is an even number. Well, I guess a muffler hatch, side and centered. Input hatch. Or maybe by side and centered, they mean something like this. We put it on top. That makes much more sense. We also put the maintenance hatch on that side and I think we covered the rest. I think we're good. You has problems, that's good. So what do we do with this? I have no idea, but I have been making a turbine. This is a large turbine made out of vibrant alloy. For optimal gas flow, it's going to generate us 3,780 EU per tick. It's less than two amps of uh, extreme voltage, correct? But it also has an efficiency of 140%, so it should give us around 5,000, I hope. I do believe you go in, do you show something? What if we give you some maintenance? Ah, you look nice. Not great, but nice. So here's how I understood this. The large gas turbine, unlike the steam turbine, is not going to consume that much fluid. But we need to control how much fluid we're going to insert. So here is a fluid regulator. And we are going to set you to one liter every tick. I, I don't think I can go lower than that. Then we're going to have a super tank, a bit of nitrobenzene, a fluid pipe. Oh, and I need to get my scanner. And we just pump it in. Are we good? Oh, everything went in. Okay. Also, I want to be able to use that power. So let us have a four times aluminium cable. The battery box. Just to see if we can charge batteries. Uh, all of you are full. Uh, let's get an empty one. Uh, why are you charging? Are you working? Oh, you're losing power. Battery boxes are just confusing. But we smack you with a mallet. Nothing happened. You are inactive. Why? Did you burn my fuel? The problem is I can't reach the input hatch. You're out of fuel. That's weird. We give you one more fuel and smack you with a mallet. It stopped. Okay, it was on one millibucket per tick, not per second. I changed it. It's just that I don't know why are you losing power instead of gaining power. I really don't understand battery boxes. It was working right here and I'm doing exactly the same thing. You place it, you put the stupid battery in. Nothing happens. Okay, we take the assembling machine. You're not exploding, that is a good sign. And I put the battery in you. Huh. 
Also, this dude is working very slowly. I think the fluid rate is garbage. Okay, so I have made a few boo-boos and the most important one was that I was thinking fluid regulators are bugged out and it's voiding my fluids. And then I remembered on the super tank I had void fluid on, so I was just voiding fuel. But apparently I managed to get it to work, so you just give it some fuel until the input hatch gets full. Now that it's full, we're going to have a fluid regulator here. For the moment, we're going to try one millibucket every second just to see if it works. We smack you with a mallet. Now it works and we are gaining power. But now we should see if the fuel is dropping. Is it dropping? Aha. Uh -huh. In the wiki, it told me that if you right click with your scanner, it's going to tell you the optimal flow. So should we go to like, I don't know, three millibuckets per second? Should I go to five? It's still dropping. Should I go to 10? Why are you still dropping? Well, it's dropping slower. We're finally stabilized. 21 millibuckets per second. Is it good or is it bad? I have no idea. If it's benzene, we're actually producing it much faster. But if it's nitro benzene, it could be a bit expensive. So let's see if that stupid battery works. I, I really don't get batteries. What the hell is wrong with you? This is why I don't use batteries. I'm just saying, because if I put it here, you see, exactly the same setup. It's draining again. I don't get that. It was working. Now it's full. Ah, now it works. Okay. You have to wait a second. Uh, so we don't need the turbine to run at this very moment because we're not running any machines, but um, I will test it. Yes, it does tell you the optimal flow. Seven liters per tick. So you have to look at this. Oh, I was not scrolling down. That was the problem. So wait a minute. Why am I at 21? I shall listen to the tooltips. We go to seven. I'm guessing it doesn't really matter if we lose the fuel. Also, these big turbines are a bit different from the small turbines that we have, meaning that they're going to run constantly, whether you need the power or if you're not using your machines. So we need to have some sort of a huge battery. I saw it in a tab. I think it's this one. Yeah, there is a power station energy buffer. Oh, you consume 5% of everything. Why? Are you a thief? Jerk? Yeah, we're not going to make it. That looks very expensive. I think the other alternative for a battery buffer would be Lapetron crystals. It holds 10 million EU. My batteries hold 6 million? Yeah, and they're kind of a pain to make. But Lapetron crystals should be easier to make. All we need is some Energium and Lapis dust. And we have 610 Energium dust. So we're good. So Lapetron crystals are a bit expensive. You have to make some sort of a shell, which is made with a ton of vibrant alloy. And vibrant alloy is not actually very cheap. It takes a very long time to prepare. Oh, that's the... Yes, you're the cooler. Yeah, each ingot takes 75 seconds. I have been cooking it for a while because I wanted to use it in order to make the rotor for our turbine. Also, I should remove the pipes. We don't need you. Oh, one thing that I forgot is that now we have the optimal flow rate for uh, benzene, not nitro benzene. I'm assuming it's going to be somewhere around 2 millibuckets. That's manageable. Easily manageable. Uh, so now that I have the shell, what the hell do I do? EV assembler. Huh. I mean, let us try it like this. See if it works. With the turbine. So we smack you with a mallet. You're not exploding. That's good. Oh, I removed the batteries. I was wondering why it's not working. So we hook you up directly. Items go in. Yes. Such a huge waste of resources. We have four amp EV turbine. We're making Lapetron crystals. I mean, we're just using one machine. That's it. Also, I should be incredibly careful with the rotor. If it breaks, this entire thing is going to explode. And I don't really know how to monitor that. Yes, Lapetron is charging up. That's actually fast. I think we might need to make a bigger battery buffer. Um, we need more Lapetron. This is actually hyper efficient on fuel. It's not that bad for the amount of power it's making. Yes, I have made a bunch of Lapetron crystals. I'm making much more of them. I don't think we're going to need more because we have 16. The turbine is running and we are finally powering our base using EV. We're no longer using transformers to bump up the power. And that's great. It's just that I have to find a nice material for a turbine. Also, the durability is great. It's 1% damage for the past, I don't know, half an hour. Oh, I did not make you in one chunk. Damn, it's fine. We have to move it anyways. Because one of the main reasons that I wanted this, apart from running some machines, is to run the blast furnace and maybe the clean room. I had other plans for this episode and, well, we're being distracted. But I really love these multi-blocks. So what we're going to do is...
we're going to have two more of them. As I have already mentioned, the main reason that I wanted these guys was to power our blast furnaces and of course some of the EV machines. So I'm using battery boxes, Lapetron crystals, EV energy hatches and EV cables. As usual, there is a teeny tiny bit of a problem. The vibrant alloy turbine that we are using generates 3780 EU per tick, correct? The way that I understood that from the wiki is that you take that number, multiply it by the turbine efficiency which is 140% and that will be the amount of EU that you're going to generate with the optimal gas flow. Optimal gas flow in our case is 1 milliliter per tick because this time we're not using benzene, we're using nitrobenzene. However, we're not generating more than 2040 EU per tick and that's weird. I'm assuming we have to use a better turbine and the better turbine that I can make at this very moment is going to be manualin. Well, I can't make it because I don't have any ardite. So instead of hypothetically getting 3700 EU, we're going to get 5600, which is a great improvement. Not that these guys are bad, they're actually great and they're extremely fuel efficient. It's just that I'm trying to run the blast furnaces at IV and they're not gonna cut it. There is an Ardite ore from Greg Tech, but we can only find it on Venus, which is a tier for rocket, so that's not gonna happen. I can't really strip the nether, so what we need to do is that we need to start making a miner. This was supposed to be climactic, it's anti-climactic because I forgot the gears. But here is the weird problem. I don't want this miner, I want the other miner, Mark II, which is an IV recipe. Tier 1 has a radius of 48 blocks, the other one has a radius of 64 blocks and I think this is something that we can make. You know, with batteries and so on and so forth, this should work. Expensive, but it should work. There is only one thing which I'm not really sure of. The energy hatch on the basic one has to be MV+. On Mark II, it has to be HV+. Does it mean that it can be HV and plus or does it mean it has to be EV? You take a while. Oh, you're ready. <laughs> it was a glitch. Also, I was under the impression that your request... Oh, we just need mining pipes. Okay, that's easy. We have a ton. For some reason, I don't know, I got it from a quest reward. So now that we have the basic miner, here's the question. Should we make the advanced miner? And yes, I did notice the iridium. We can cool it down at extreme voltage, which is not going to be a problem, I guess. But cooking it is going to be insane voltage. I think our batteries are going to hold. Yeah, your extreme voltage, good. And this is the amount of iridium metal residue dust that we have. If I process it, I should be able to get iridium. It's gonna take a bajillion years to process it. Well, this part is fast. I'll tell you what, I will try to make it. And if we run into any problems with the energy hatch, I also have a solution. Everything that I have just mentioned is not going to work unless I make an IV assembler and hope that this IV assembling machine is going to work with a Lapetron battery. But that should be a quest. With a loot bag? Yes, with a loot bag. Quantum eye and pistons. Thank you. Those were IV pistons. So I don't have power for you. You stay over there. I'm going to take a Lapetron crystal and let's find a recipe. Doesn't really have to be a super complex recipe, but if I put the Lapetron crystal in, we put you to circuit number four. Are you going to do anything? No. Why? Every battery has it here except Lapetron crystals, so I thought maybe it's just an energy cell and you can use it in every machine? Apparently not. Although I can always use the transformer, it's not a big deal. Yeah, we just need you to work for 20 seconds. Then we don't care. Okay, let me get Iridium. Actually, getting Iridium was not that difficult because at the start of the episode, I was doing a quest line for getting some platinum in the extreme voltage age and I already had everything that we needed. It's just that halfway through I ran out of ammonium chloride and I have to make more, but we have one stack of iridium chloride dust, which that's it. If we mix it with calcium, we get iridium. So I guess all of you go in and something should happen. Does it take long? 15 seconds. Even if this doesn't work, it's not a lost investment. I needed iridium for making ender chests and tanks. All of them need an iridium rod. If I upgrade my wand, I can make it. One stupid problem at a time. Still, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work, but let us give it a test. The battery should hold. 54 seconds. We just need 8 ingots, I don't really care. Also, you, start working. It seems we're going to make it. We got our first one. Yes, hot iridium ingot. 28 seconds to cool down. You're very hot. While the iridium is cooking up, we have a very garbage system over here. Let us take some Lapetron crystals, one for every battery. Your IV, right? Yes. So if I put you here, you should technically work. We put you to circuit number four. It works. So in order to make the miner, we're going to need 3 million EU. We have 14 million, I think. 
yeah, <laughs> we should be fine. Oh, it's just that I have to make these. Uh -oh. Also, it's a very good thing that today we started making circuits. Oh, and it gets more fun. You need four. I can make 15. We also have three pumps, so I need just one more pump. I don't really want to waste the tungsten. Uh, and four conveyor modules. Some silicon rubber. I think we should be good. Don't you worry. Yes, it's not eight iridium ingots, it's 16. My bad, but the battery survived. You stop working. So just in case the high voltage energy hatch is not going to be sufficient, we're going to use the energy absorber. It just needs a dragon egg, which we already have. It's quite a bit expensive, but I think this is going to be the easiest method. Of course, another alternative would be to use a battery buffer with a ton of Lapatron crystals. I don't think it's going to consume that much power. What is this? Oh, nitrogen. Come on, give me the last two. We are done. We just need two more gears. If this works, I'm extremely surprised. Okay. Soldering alloy, gears go in, and you start it. 20 seconds. For me personally, this is very stressful, but yeah, we finally have it. Old drilling plant, Mark II. We also scan you, just in case. Thank you, thank you. This stupid system is also good, because we would be able to operate an IV assembling machine. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.